All right. Well, thanks for joining everyone. Um, today we've got uh, Jared McKinnon from the INH South Coast team. Uh, he's been using GeoSite for quite some time to help him in his sales process and then siting homes um, onto blocks. Um, so we're hoping that Jared will be able to give us a bit of a, a brief run through on how to use GeoSite. Um, so Jared has mentioned he's got a bit of a, a PowerPoint slide, which he may show us later. Um, if not, we might be able to make that available to everyone at a later date. Um, but yeah, we'll just work through some sort of a, a brief uh, training session, I guess, if you've Beautiful. You've got GeoSite there. So thanks, Jared. You can take it from here. No worries. Thank you. So I guess the, the first thing out there is there's obviously different types of blocks. Um, run you through a pretty basic one to start with, and that would be uh, like a, a 15 and a half, or oh, 15 metre frontage by 30 metres long. Um, so what you go, when, when you log in at the front there, it'll come up to this page. Uh, you'll have a little icon on the side here, which says Land Wizard. So when you click on that, it comes up with all those sorts of things with shapes, all that sort of stuff. So if you have a, a linen plan that you're having trouble with uh, getting it through this way, you can actually um, upload it. Uh, and what it will ask for is a um, dimension just to get the, the scale correct, or at least very close to. Um, for this one, basically all we would be doing is going a, uh, the width there, 15 by 30. Okay, so that's obviously going to give us just a rectangular block and we scroll right down to the bottom there and it'll give you your, your offsets. So if you hit standard DCP and CDC setbacks, it'll give you um, your standard Greenfield code. Um, but this one here, so for example, where we are at the moment, let's go four and a half for the, for the front setback. Uh, left setback is going to be 900 mil. Uh, oh, rear setback is going to be three metres and then 0 0.9. Nine. So basically four and a half frontage, three metres at the back and 900 either side. And you continue going down the bottom there and you hit create allotment there. And it will say that, hit OK. And that's basically you build an envelope there. So very easiest, it takes you all of 11 seconds to get those up uh, normally. What we'll do there is you go into this side here, where you, sorry, this part here where you've got uh, home design studios. So on that, you get the option of your either your single or your double story homes. Um, home design goes there and all the homes that have been uploaded there. Uh, that's so a second there, Jared. Those, um, those home designs, they're all our standard designs that we've uploaded to this system. So that was done at a point in time a little while ago. We've got a few new ones that will work to adding those in. So we're just working with GeoSite to work out that process. Yeah, so if yeah. something that's missing, we'll get that added in, in time. Yeah, no, my skill set's only so so large. I don't know how to upload the, the custom plans or anything like that yet. But um, as I said, if you're using one of the standard plans, it gives you a good idea anyway. Um, so once you, once you get single or double story, you go into the plan designs. Um, so for example, we'll just go and have a long 230. Um, and then in a second, it should load up there. So that sits to scale on site. And then all you basically do is bring that down to that, that front section there. The porch will always be red. It'll stick a bit over, so don't panic about that. Obviously, with the Greenfield code, you're allowed to. With a few of the things on the outside, like this one has your gas bottles on the outside, obviously, they're allowed to, to be red. It's more just to, as long as you can explain that. So they're red. Otherwise, that line there, as you can see, runs in lines inside the border. Um, and then, like, if your client wants to know access, side access or rear uh, backyard, you hit on that one there, that gives you your distance or your bearing, and then you basically go from the edge of your home to the side there. So for example, that one leaves you with uh, just shy of two metres in width. So it's not going to be 100% perfect, but um, it's, as I said, it's more just there for the, for the visual representation. So if you move that home around there, Jared, does it go red if you move it outside that boundary? Yeah, that's right. So if you're outside the, where you're allowed to be, it goes red. Um, so anything sticking outside your offsets. So, and those offsets are determined by what you put in the front. Uh, what you'll notice is you'll always come up with a five and a half metre one at the front here. Um, that's obviously for the garage setback. This is all designed to uh, deal with a lot of your greenfield sites. So it's the project sort of uh, builders use this quite often because they'll have all these standard plants and uh, most developments around the, the Sydney, Illawarra sort of area have uh, pretty standard offsets and all that sort of stuff. So. 
Um, as I said, you, you get that in and away you go. So that's probably one of the easier ones. When you get into here, one little trick, if you go north, if you rotate that, it flips the whole screen around. So if you do that, it flips the whole screen and just becomes a nuisance. Um, so what you actually need to do is that there, let's say um, north is up that direction, you're going to rotate down the, the side here and you'll actually do it that way um, and, and get the northern bearings. What you'll eventually be able to do is go into your, your sun and it's got um, winter all day. So for example, this will give you an idea of the sunlight's coming in from uh, this one's set to north until I save it, but that there shows you where your, your winter sun's going to be coming in from, and it gives you your shadow diagrams as well. Um, so just like if you if you're there choosing between blocks, you can give that a bit of a, a bit of a go. And uh, one of the things that I tend to do is go like at ten o'clock in winter, you can see where the sunlight's coming in compared to, to ten o'clock there in the summer. Obviously, it's a a lot less a lot more direct over the summer period. So uh, just gives you. A lot of clients will sit there and go, oh, yeah, that's all right, but um, it's a good little selling point anyway, being able to explain those sorts of things and why you're orientating the house that way. Now, seeing how the sun comes in there, what you can do is you can click on that. Back in Home Design Studio, you, if you click on that and go Invert Home, okay, that, that will actually flip the home completely for you. That's a clever feature. Maybe, yeah, yeah, absolutely. So there you go. And then again, you just get it back in there. So um, back inside the lines, do all that sort of stuff. And then if you go 10 hour, uh, ten o'clock again, um, you can see obviously the shadow line there. So the, the sunlight's coming all through that area there. So uh, a few little, few little toy, toys on there. Uh, if you're doing like multi-unit sites, you've got multi-dwellings and all those sorts of things. So you can, you can sort it relatively accurately, uh, which is, which is good. So, so that there's a, a pretty, pretty straightforward block, as I said. So I guess rather than, flooding it all. I'll show you one other example because not all blocks are a perfect um, perfect rectangle. But that there, once again, you go into Land Wizard. Um, what I'm going to pull up, that there is just a linen plan of a block. I've got it printed out, so if I look away, I'm not cheating. It's right here. Yeah. Um, so let's use 3404 there as an example. You can see that in the linen plan, it's got a curved edge. So if we go in there, number 22, see frontage has a, um, a curve on it. Um, so what we do is obviously get the scale across the side there. So what we would do there, you always start on the front boundary um, and you go clockwise from uh, the, the front right corner as it would be. So it's always start from the front right corner and go across your frontage first and go clockwise. Uh, it's, it's how all the geosite operates. Um, so three, four, three, four, for example. So again, we go over to, to number 22, the front bound, oh, I'll go back into this just quickly just to show you where we get into. So again, we're going to Land Wizard. Now, rather than doing it up the top here, we're gonna to need to go down into this little section here, which breaks down the boundaries uh, individually. Make sure that it's on bearings, and then you go into that. So if I go back into this, uh, what were we, 20, uh, yeah, 20, 22. Um, so your distance is 12.685 uh, with a bearing of 104.22. Uh, so, what we're going to go into is, so that's 12.685, and the bearing there was 104.22. Now, because it's a curved edge at the front there, um, we've got to put in curve on the geosite. So we go back into that uh, curve, and then it's gonna ask for a couple of different things, your radius and your arc value. So if we go back into that and look for the radius, it'll tell us here. Uh, 22, so your radius is 67, and your arc is 4.705. So um, I've already forgotten that, but 67, and then your arc is 12.705. So that there should be there. Now, because it's pointing towards a row, uh, the road, the, um, the curve's gonna be below. Um, so yeah, it's, always working from that frontage. Then you go back in and you do it pretty straightforward from here. So you're just entering everything else in manually. Um, so the left-hand boundary, again, we're going clockwise, 28.76 with a bearing of 436 and 25. 28.76 and the bearing of that one, 436.25. Um, rear boundary, I'm just going through 12 and a half. Uh, your bearings are over here, so 274, 36, 
74, 36, 25. Um, and then you go into your right hand boundary, which is going to be the last one, which is just here. So 30.19, and your variance of 4, 36, 25. Thirty-six, twenty-five. Now, fingers crossed, I got that right. But basically, again, you go down here. You're going to go. Um, if you if you click use standard CDC setbacks, it's going to come back up as that. So you can always do that as a cheat because I'm using a single story. You just click that box and get rid of that. So these are your standard offsets. Um, this one here, for um, for example, is going to be the the shorter boundary which is going to be your left-hand boundary. It's actually a zero allotment. So what we what we do with that one is we go a 0.2, just give us a couple hundred mil down the side there. Hit again, down the bottom, create allotment, hopefully. There you go. So you've got all your offsets there. Again, if you don't like the look of that five one being there, you can simply, I'll say simply, but you can, whoop. normally you can click on these, but it's not playing ball. But if you, if you find one of these that you don't want, like that, you can actually hit delete. It's not going to work for me, so good example. Um, but again, you go into that single story. Um, let's go, let's go the Evoca 205 as an example. Should come up. So there you go. So that, that's your Evoca 205. So your garage obviously zero boundary. It's pretty much hit it spot on. So four and a half meters, your, your porches. So you can actually come a little bit further forward if you wanted to, or it doesn't really make a difference. You can have your porch overhanging in the greenfield, um, but obviously that's all meat inside. You've only got the gas bottles on the outside there, so they'll go, most of your developments. But again, that's pretty much giving you 900 down one side, and then um, what, I, whoop, what I tend to do is, is sort of measure from the back and give the, the clients a bit of an idea of their backyards. That one there, 5.389 metres. So, um, yeah, but that's, that's a, a very brief sort of overview on how it works. Um, when you drop that forward, plan in there, Jared, when you drop that plan in, did it automatically bring that as far forward on the block as it could? Is that what happened? No, that was, that was by chance. Uh, okay. <laughs> it just landed in a good spot. So uh, normally, normally you've got to move around a little bit and get it, get it exactly where you want to. But um, yeah, it normally goes inside the inside there, but very rarely does it get it bang on like that one did. Awesome. Yeah. So um, that's pretty much it. Like if, if you're putting it with a developer or something, we put the private open space just to make sure they're happy. If you don't want it in there, you simply go like that. Um, again, let's, let's, let's assume that that's the uh, north point facing up that way. If you said, yep, and your client wanted to, to print that, what you'll need to do is put in their details. Um, so I'll just go custom array. Um, the reason you do this, Oh, sorry. Uh, lot one. We'll go to Grange. And then that there allows you to save it. So you can't print it until you save it or you can't even convert it to a PDF. So you just hit save citing. And go like so. And then that there will now allow you to print. So you'll go up to the this print button up the top there. Um, going A4, A3 doesn't really matter and it'll take a few minutes but um, or a few seconds anyway it'll sit up there so how it's going to print out um, you always have Tim's contact details down the bottom that's why I'm getting a lot of phone calls <laughs> absolutely well, hopefully it means we're using it but, um, in, a, in a second there it'll actually it'll pop down the bottom of the screen as a PDF and then um, There it is. Okay. So if I zoom out there, that's something that you can print out, send as an email, do whatever you like to, um, put as part of your package, do what you will with, but that there's just a PDF version of what we've created. Very nice. So that private open space that you showed us before, was that just a simple matter of dragging that and, and making that a shape and that'll give you the area? Uh, yeah, I've deleted it now, but uh, I would know how to get it back. But yeah, if you, if you just put it in the backyard there, it's just to represent that you've acknowledged it. Some developers require that as part of their, like if you're doing it up as a house and land package, as an example, um, they'll require it there. Keep in mind, this is sort of like, uh, uh, it's sort of like IPROX in the sense that uh, we use it for the quoting system. This is just purely a, a, a sales documentation. You obviously wouldn't exchange a contract based on this because mm. uh, it can be a few hundred, a couple hundred mil out if you're, 
if you hold the mouse in the wrong spot sort of thing. So, so I'd assume the process you'd go through, you'd use this as a sales tool and then progress through to a designer and actually get it drawn up. Yeah, 100%. Through the contract. Yeah, so, yeah. Yeah, so if, they, if they like a design in particular, um, even if it's custom design that they brought in, but we have a house that's 11.1 metres wide, I can use that just to give them an, an idea of how much, uh, how much side access they're going to have. Very nice. All right. So we've got a, quite a few attendees there. So if anyone's got any questions, let us know. Pop your hand up and I can allow you to talk in there. Have you got anything else to run through there, Jared? Or that's the, the general uh, idea? Yeah, look, that's the general idea. As you get to the trickier box, it becomes a bit more of a, a headache and a lot of the linen plans are incorrect. But um, that, that's a bit of an overview. As I said, I've got a bit of a, spread, uh, a, bit of a PowerPoint that I can chuck up that i uh, send over to you anyway so you can have a look at and all it is is just going stage by stage and just a sniffing tool mate it's not pretty but it will uh it should give her a bit of a gist of how it operates uh, very good so i assume a, an odd shaped block we've done an arc an odd shaped block would be just as easy to to map out in here yeah yeah i, I think one of the big things like as soon as you get onto a like let's just as an example like you oh, give that one. um so as soon as you start getting into blocks with that sort of shape where you've got a frontage a, side, a secondary frontage and then all that sort of stuff. That's where it starts to get a little bit more complicated. Um, as I said, if you, if you stick to the rule of thumb, that's going to be your frontage, always go clockwise. Um, mm -hmm. And then just have them as your secondary frontage. So uh, going back into that, you, you've got in your land wizard, where I hit arc, for example, um, you've also got things like your, add your front boundary. So if it's a corner block, you've also got your little um, your little tangent point that cuts back on your on your linen plan that you can add into the frontage or wherever you like. So um, yeah, so with these sorts of blocks you get a little bit more complicated, but Very they good. certainly work on him. Well, I just had a question from Darren. He's just asking whether this is a free tool or not. So. Darren, no, it's not a free tool, um, but we have our, um, our cooperative fund. So we do have a license uh, that we've got at the moment. So we can arrange for you to have a, a play with that if you need to. Um, so as we progress and if we get a lot of take up, we can increase our licenses and get more if required. Uh, I can't remember offhand exactly what the cost is, uh, but again, it's, it's being paid from our cooperative fund at the moment. All right, that might be um, all the questions we've got. Um, yeah, Darren's just saying thank you. Awesome. All right, well, that was a great run through, Jared. Um, so, have you got anything else to run through, or well, that's that's it now? No, that's that's pretty much pretty much me. I mean, you you pick up a bit more when you play with it, but if you need any help, just let us know. Very good. All right. Well, thanks for joining us and showing us through. No worries. Um, so we'll make that available to everyone online shortly and everyone can review it at a later date. And yeah, if you can share that PowerPoint slide, we can make that available as well. No worries. Perfect. Awesome. Thanks, Jared. Thanks for attending everyone. We'll see you next week.